I'm Chrissy, and we are going to talk about microphone types and their applied polar patterns. First up, let's talk about condenser microphones versus dynamic. Condenser microphones have a conductive diaphragm and a conductive backplate. Air is used as the insulator to separate the diaphragm and the backplate. In a condenser microphone, sound waves cause the diaphragm to move back and forth, subsequently changing the distance between the diaphragm and the backplate. As the distance changes, the amount of charge or capacitance stored between the diaphragm and backplate changes. This change in capacitance produces an electrical audio signal at the output of the capsule. Since we are on the topic of condenser, we have to mention a type of condenser called an electret. The electric microphone gets its name from the pre-polarized material applied to the microphone's diaphragm or backplate. The electret provides a permanent fixed charge for one side of the capacitor configuration. This permanent change eliminates the need for the higher voltage required for powering the typical condenser microphone. In a dynamic microphone, a coil of wire is attached to a diaphragm and placed in a permanent magnetic field. Sound pressure waves cause the diaphragm to move back and forth, thus moving the coil of wire attached to it. As the diaphragm and the coil assembly moves, it cuts across the magnetic lines of flux of the magnetic field, inducing a voltage onto the actual coil of the wire. The voltage induced into the coil is proportional to the sound pressure and produces an electrical audio signal. The strength of this signal is very small and it's called mic level signal. Typical voltages vary from a few millivolts to several hundred millivolts, depending on the construction. Dynamic microphones are economical, durable, and will handle high sound pressure levels. Unlike condenser microphones, they do not require a source of power. Why choose condenser over dynamic? Needs of the task, sensitivity, and proximity effect. We have videos on the first two considerations, but let's highlight proximity effect for a moment. Proximity effect happens when a dynamic microphone gets closer to a sound source. As the microphone gets closer to the sound source, the low end frequencies become more apparent. I would need to accommodate for this with the place of a microphone or change the type of microphone used. Phantom power is the remote power required to power certain condenser microphones. It typically ranges from 12 to 48 volts DC. Phantom power is most often available from an audio mixer. It may be switched on or off at each individual microphone input or from a single button on the audio mixer that makes phantom power available on all the microphone inputs at once. If phantom power is not available from the audio mixer, separate phantom power supplies may be used. So we have the base layer of a type of microphone figured out. Now let's look at the many physical descriptions of microphone types. Handheld microphones are used mainly for speech or singing. Since it is constantly moved around, a handheld microphone includes internal shock mounting to reduce handling noise. This type of microphone is designed to be mounted directly against a hard boundary of surface such as a conference table or a stage floor and sometimes a ceiling. Gooseneck microphones are used most often on lecterns and conference tables. The microphone is attached to a flexible or bendable stem which comes in varying lengths. Shotgun microphones, a type of phase array microphone, are named for their physical shape, as well as their long and narrow polar pattern. You would find this in like a movie production or theater stage recording. Here we have instrument microphones. In this group of microphones, they are designed to pick up the sounds of musical instruments either directly from acoustic instruments or from the loudspeaker cabinet of an amplified instrument. Here, parabolic, a parabolic microphone is something you might see on a football field where it's used a reflective cone to direct the captured sound directly into the microphone. A lavalier, also called a lav or lapel, is attached directly to clothing such as a necktie or lapel. A head microphone is a microphone that is attached to a small thin boom and fitted around the ear. Since size and appearance and color matter for these microphones, lavaliers and head mics are most often an electric microphone. Often worn by a presenter, they're commonly used in television and theater productions. Beam forming arrays, another type of phase array microphone, have multiple microphone elements, usually condenser microphone capsules. So each physical type of microphone is either a condenser or dynamic, and each physical type has some sort of polar pickup pattern. What is this magic? Let's discuss. A polar pickup pattern is defined by the directions from which the microphone can pick up sound. In other words, with certain polar patterns, mics can pick up or reject sounds from different directions. Let's look at the first one. 
The omnidirectional is where sound is picked up in all directions. All right, this is an omnidirectional polar pattern microphone, and I am showcasing its polar pattern by moving around 360 degrees, and you can notice that my voice is staying the same. Cardioid is where pickup sits at the front of the microphone in a cardioid pattern. It picks up some sound coming from the side, but the most rejection is at the rear of the microphone. The term cardioid refers to the heart-shaped polar pattern. Now I am speaking into a cardioid microphone, and as you can tell, when I walk around at 360 degrees, which parts of the microphone picks up my voice and which parts it does not, as I continue to complete my 360 degree circle. Hypercardioid is a variant of the cardioid. This type is more directional than the regular cardioid because it rejects more sound from the side. The trade-off is that some sound will be picked up directly at the rear of the microphone. Supercardioid provides better directionality than the hypercardioid as it rejection from the side is better. It also has more rear pickup than the hypercardioid. So think of a balloon. Blow it up and then stick a microphone in the middle of it. If I squeeze the center of it, the pickup patterns move to the back of the microphone. The pickup has to happen somewhere. Okay, with this microphone, this is a supercardioid polar pattern. I'm going to walk around this microphone as much as I can in order for you to hear where the polar pattern picks up or does not pick up my entire voice as I circle around. Bidirectional is where pickup is equal in opposite directions with little or no pickup from off access based on the construction of the microphone. This is something also referred to as the figure eight pattern because of the shape of its polar pattern. I'm going to walk around this microphone to showcase its polar pattern of bidirectional. I'm going to go from one side of the microphone to the other, and you can hear which part of my voice and when it's picked up by the microphone. Now, how do I know what polar pattern to use? Consider these parameters. How close to the source is my microphone? How many sound sources does each microphone need to capture sound from? Are you recording or reinforcing live sound? Another th important thing to consider is microphone sensitivity, which we do have another video for. I hope this helps sort out some really cool information about microphones, and if you want to know more information, check out Essentials of AV on our online portal at avixa.org.